For today's video, I'm going to talk about the 111W, and this one is a 111W-152, but there's several different series of this machine that's exactly the same. They're all walking foot, triple, compound feed sewing machines. And if you don't know what that means, what that means is down here at the presser foot, there's three different actions going on. You have uh, two different types of presser feet moving um, back and forth to bring the leather through. Plus you have the feed dogs. And then also the needle is moving back and forth as well through the material. So you have three different types of motion pulling the material through. And it keeps control of the material so that you get a nice consistent uh, stitch. The Singer 111W looks like this from a profile. From the top, it looks like this. And then also, you can see in the back here, it looks like this. There's a single little bar. It tells me it's a walking foot sewing machine. And this little knob up here on top, that controls the presser foot tension. And that's kind of important when working with leather because often these machines will be set to work with fabric and the presser foot tension will be like screwed all the way down and you're literally like holding the fabric or holding the leather uh, you know with the grip of death and it's marking the leather up so you want to kind of make sure to adjust that and bring off the pressure a little bit but this is what the machine looks like from a profile and from the top and side and uh, Again, you're going to find a lot of these in your marketplace. This particular machine was built in 1951. I know because it has a plate on here celebrating uh, the centennial of Singer, uh, the first 100 years. But let's say if it didn't have that special uh, plate on there. Uh, sometimes you might be able to find out by looking at the serial number, which is below here. But the W serial numbers, I believe, are all lost because there was a fire. Uh, if it's an AE serial number, you might be able to find out the date. But you should assume generally, basically, these are, you know, prior to World War II, during and after World War II, uh, probably through the mid-50s, I guess. Um, there is a website called Isaacs I will put in the comments. And you can look up any industrial Singer sewing machine in Isaacs by number, by this, the, by this little plate right here. And it'll tell you exactly when, when they were made, how long they were made, and what they were made for. It's a very helpful site. I really recommend using it when you're shopping for a used sewing machine. So at the very top of the machine, there's a small compartment. And if you open this compartment up, you're going to see there's access to the timing belt. If you see a cog cloth timing belt in there, and they're kind of really, and it looks old and it's got a lot of grease on it, that's the original timing belt most likely, and you will probably have to replace that. And that's a significant repair because this balance wheel comes off, they, they have to get in there, you're gonna have to send it to an industrial sewing machine technician to change out the timing belt, the timing will have to be readjusted in the machine, it is not a simple repair. So, but if you see a timing belt like this, a neoprene, that means it's already been done and you most likely will never have to deal with this timing belt. And that, my friend, is very good news. Trust me, because I've had a timing belt go out on a machine and it was a very bad day. And it taught me an important lesson about these machines. The bobbin casing is underneath this plate here. And the bobbin loads into that little device and the string comes around and um, there's a couple other directions on how to load the bobbin. But the real reason I'm showing you this bobbin casing is this is gonna go around and around and around. Every single stitch, this is uh, turning. This piece of the machine is the most likely to fail, especially after maybe 40 or 50 years of service in some kind of factory. Keep in mind, you have no idea where these machines came from or what their history is. But if it's in decent condition, I can tell you, it's probably been through multiple different upholstery shops, different factories, and uh, it could have even you know, been in a factory before World War II and also in a factory all throughout World War II. The machine could have been running nonstop for years 
every single day. It could have even been on um, uh, dual shifts or um, you know all kinds of different um, environments. So if it's an original uh, bobbin casing, you may find that you need to replace that because you're getting an irregular stitch underneath. And yes, it's sewing through leather, maybe it's sewed through fabric, which is fine, but for some reason now, once you bought it, you're, you're noticing an irregular stitch. Replacing that bobbin casing um, and doing that kind of service repair would be in the neighborhood of three to $400 usually. So keep that in mind when you're uh, shopping for this kind of machine. Notice how I can stop real quick. You can even almost do one single stitch at a time. A little bit of the knee raise up. completely control how well I'm stitching. Here's from another angle. Pretty well controlled. These machines don't have backstitch, so there's a couple ways to do it. Um, number one, you could um, just lower it down and wait till the needle starts to come up. Lift the knee raise and go backwards and then back stitch that way. <clears throat> Another way is you wait till the needle's up, you pull it back a little bit, then you bring the needle down and I don't like this way, but I'm going to show you. And you just, you know, go that way. So I don't know if you can tell this or not, but um, it's the back stitch, it's the front stitch. And the presser foot, especially this middle one, has a little indentation. So if you see right here, and it's not really showing up really well, but it's it's already indenting the leather before, uh, so it makes a, a groove for the stitch to sit into for the next stitch to be laid down, which is a real nice feature um, that just was automatically on this machine. Something to be said about the machine about changing the, t the um, thread, um, the stitch length. That's done on this machine by pushing these buttons and then looking through this hole until a number comes through. And quite frankly, it's, so, it's a little bit tricky and I have to look up each time how to do it on this machine. Some of the ones that are built later, um, you know, the, the stitch length will be changed on the side of the machine and on the balance wheel or they have some other kind of mechanism for changing it. This is the earlier one, so, you know, that's the one part about this machine that's kind of tricky, which is uh, changing the stitch length. 
So I'm not really sure what else to say about these machines other than they're a workhorse. And once you get them working properly, you know, a little bit of oil and adjustments here and there, they're, they're perfectly fine. And they're just a real strong workhorse machine. That's why they kind of lasted forever. They're, you know, like they're 80, 90 years old and you still find them on uh, Marketplace or Greg's List. They're coming out of upholstery shops, uh, drapery shops, uh, you know, all kinds of different places, um, various factories. So they're not a rare machine and you can pick these up for a pretty decent price, like a couple hundred bucks sometimes. Um, but keep in mind, again, the timing belt's really important and the bobbin case is important as well because you may have to replace those two items if you're buying a really truly vintage machine. Most of the time though, however, if these have been in use for any time whatsoever in a shop, like an upholstery shop or an auto uh, shop, etc., the timing belt's gonna be changed out and maybe even the bobbin casing and they might be able to tell you that. So um, again, I really highly recommend this as a, uh, as a great uh, inexpensive leather walking foot sewing machine that you can most likely pick up and find pretty quickly in your marketplace. And frankly, I don't think I'll ever be selling my own. Thanks, be, hit, be sure to subscribe and hit like if you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed this content and I look forward to presenting the next video to you. Thanks, bye.